Ooh, baby, we have an informative one for you this week. That's right, we're giving sex, we're giving hoochie. We're giving comedy talk. And we're giving fart. Uh, baby, because you ain't the You're not even, You're the, not fart. even the fart. Margaret Cho is on the show with us today. How exciting, Hollywood legend. So get into it and enjoy this week's episode. I know I will. You M. Oh. M. Mom. When your first choice is a big old bus, you turn around and boom, you end up with a sloppy second. Oh, Diva. Our number is 213-536-9180. Or you know what's sloppy seconds pot at gmail.com. Now on with the show. Hi, you sloppy, you stupid little f***ing, that's a f***ing, you dirty little f***. Welcome to Sloppy Seconds with Big Dipper and Meatball. I'm Meatball, and that's Big Dipper. I'm wearing a necklace. Don't call, just text me. Because I'm sexy. Okay, you were saying that it was Beyonce? Yes. And I see what you're saying. You're saying the energy dress. Yes, but hers energy. is green, and she goes like this. Yes. I like that titty bounce. You can hear the necklace. Do, oh. you, think, do you think you're feeling your oats? I think I'm just trying to look nice. Why don't you glue that back on? Because we have a special guest today. Oh, yeah. Oh, f we, well, uh, Why don't you introduce her? Are you ready for our extremely special guest? Yes. She is an icon, a legend, a trailblazer, a badass, a dog mom, a tattoo enthusiast, also a cat mom. Please welcome to the stage, Margaret, Margaret Cho! Yay! Hi. 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 How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Great. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. We, Thank you. We're thrilled to have you. Yeah, you, this is huge for us. You are taking some time off of the road because you're currently on tour with the Live and Livid Tour. Yes. And you're here with us on our podcast, which yes. is unbelievable. Oh, thank you. I'm honored. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you spend a lot of times with drag queens, right? Yes. You're like one of your close friends was, what was her name? Jackie B? <laughs> no, not Jackie B. Um, um uh, <laughs> Monastat. Monastat. Oh, okay. She's my drag daughter. And oh. um I've I've been around drag queens my entire life. I mean, I grew up raised by drag queens in um the seventies in San Francisco. Yeah. And oh so, you know, there's a long history of drag in my lifetime. So it's wonderful to see how popular it is now. Yeah. It's kinda wild, right? It's incredible. Yeah. Thoughts? She's like, yes, the popularity? No. <laughs> popularity? Popular. It's a popular thing now. Um, it's, it's, no, you're doing a classic drag uh, thing right now, which is that you glued an earring to your chest yeah. for the yeah. illusion of a necklace. I like it. Absolutely. I like it. Well, because it's also, it's like a piercing. Yeah, yeah kind like, of. She got a dermal. Oh my gosh. We, Remember when those were so popular, people would just get them all over their face? Yeah. I've seen a lot of them like, uh, you know what really freaks me out is when they get it like in their gum line. Mm -hmm. You know, when they get like, oh. uh, like a, yeah, a piercing up and they're like, yeah, their gum. my gums could never. <laughs> my gums are so receded that my, my gums are in Reseda. They uh -huh. actually... <laughs> There's some good <laughs> gums living in Reseda. Like, it's there too far, my gums. My gums have gone too far. Oh, no. That is a very shaming experience when you go to the dentist mm. and they, like, do whatever the measurement is oh, on the gum. Do you know the yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. The first time, I, it had been a while since I went to the dentist. Mm -hmm. And I moved out to L.A. and I was like, you know what, bitch? I'm getting my dental hygiene together. Mm -hmm. And I go to the dentist. Mm -hmm. Now you get mad at me because I go four times a year for the Which cleaning. Which is crazy to me. That's so many four times. Four times a year? It. That's so many Quarterly. times. Quarterly. But then you have, you, have no, you have no tartar. It's better to go often, then it doesn't hurt. Yes. And, and it's not so scary. The oh. first time I went, they were doing the gum measurements, and mm. they were giving four, five, bleeding, bleeding, mm -hmm. five, well, they, whatever they this prick is. at it. I remember the last time I went, they went, we got loose gums. <laughs> yeah, the gums are like, th that's the weirdest thing about aging is how far they recede. But also, you know what's worse is calculus. When they get that hard crust oh, on the teeth. Oh, yeah. When it's just like, you know, it's very, it's very meth mouth. Yes. Like, and you know? can like see it. You can like kind of dig in Ooh. it. Yeah. Meth India, mouth. India Farah. <laughs> oh, what? My she God. had that real bad. She oh. came for some girls and then Meme they just culture. started posting pictures of her teeth. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Those are good times. But some people, you know, flossing, you have to like, why is dental hygiene as a child? just abhorrent. 
Mm. We I don't want to do it. But You're I remember I used to run the run the water and stick my toothbrush under there and just stand and then be like, it's wet. 30 yeah. seconds later, I did it. Like, why do we not want to do that? You know, well, I can I know. say one thing? What? Little kids' teeth, they all fall out. So you're not really mm-hmm. taking care of anything. You know what? That is it's true. It's like, what's the mm-hmm. point of even doing it until you're an adult? You're not as um, emotionally tied to yeah, the longevity. Exactly. You're like, your they're going to be gone soon anyway. <laughs> um, I want to talk about your tour. Yes. You. There's a quote in, in the announcement about your tour that says, celebrating 40 years as a stand-up comedian. Is that true? Yeah. 40 crazy? years? 40, since, yeah. Since uh, 1983. It's so crazy because I, I started really young. Yeah. yeah. And um, I was doing comedy as a kid, like, and I was going to comedy clubs. I had a partner, was a, I was a comedy duo with Sam Rockwell, who's uh-huh. a very famous actor now. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we would do these comedy shows and they, we, they, they like, we had to leave the bar because, you know, we were too young to be in there, but we could go on and do the show and then like leave. So, uh, yeah, I've been doing it for a really long time. That's incredible. That's insane. Like what a I mean when I think of you I I feel like you're such a household name. Mm-hmm. But literally at the same time I wouldn't be shocked if I went into a dive bar and you were doing a set for like 12 people and she'll then do like anything. The bitch will do anything. Yeah, she, I mean, you're here. Will, you're doing this. I know. She'll you, do we were in a stand up show together <laughs> one time and I was like, how am I on the same bill as Margaret? Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think that like I have to do it because I'll get to, it's like going to the dentist. If you don't do it often, you get scared. <laughs> <That's it>. Quarterly. <laughs> then you're like, what am I doing? Yeah. Like, you have to do it. Like I have to do it a couple times a day, I think. Really? In general, to like keep it like going, to yeah. keep it moving. Because I'm so, like I'll forget everything and then I get stage fright and then it builds and builds and builds and then I'll just never do it. So... That's why I try to do as many shows as I can. I think like it just keeps me better. Yeah, yeah. It keeps well, you in practice. It's yeah. also amazing that after forty years, you're like, not only are you doing it, but it doesn't seem like you're doing it begrudgingly. Oh no, yeah. no, you I still love, it. love it. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's also like I just don't know how to. Um, I have social anxiety when it's like just uh, people. So when I go out and like do comedy, it's like that's my social life. And there's a much. structure to it. There's a structure, and then I like I'm going on stage. I know what's going to happen, and then it's over, and then I can go home, and right. then it's like a really satisfying way to be social without having to engage in trauma. Well, <laughs> I'm sure people dump on you all the time. I'm just scared all the time. <laughs> well, I also I'm sober, so that's kind of the other thing too. Like I can't really go to parties. I can't right. really go to bars. Mm-hmm. I don't really do any of that kind of stuff. So uh, for me, stand-up comedy is that. It's like my social life. It's like where I get to see my friends. It's where I get to just talk or whatever, and then I can leave. That's a muscle. I've been sober for a while, too, and that muscle of, like, when you do – I still go out to parties, and I still – um, like over New Year's, I went mm. to Palm Springs and Good. I hung out with a group of guys and mm-hmm. I purposely told myself, I'm like, go do this. Mm-hmm. But the whole sort of vibe was we're drinking, who's mm-hmm. doing shots, yeah. what party drugs are we going to do? And then we're going mm-hmm. out to the club. That was the plan. It wasn't, you know, all day long and they're not like, you know, whatever. I'm not speaking ill of them. I was just like, what do I do with my hands? What do right. I do with my... Yeah, I find that difficult right now, too, because, like, I don't want to be out drinking, but it's like, what else is there to do? Yeah. Well... What? <laughs> For me, as a drag queen. Oh, sure. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, when I go and host my show, it's like everyone's just sending me shots to the back, and mm-hmm. I could have some, like, self-respect and be like, please stop, but I don't. <laughs> and you take not them yet. all down. And I take them all down, and I black out on stage. <laughs> Which is, a, there's a place for that, too. Sure, that, that's, sure. That's, and I think my party is, is the perfect place for that. It's fun it for is. that. <laughs> it's fun for that. I've done a lot of that, you know? Yeah. And so now it's really just, like, for me, stand-up comedy is a good way to encase the social experience and make it safe mm-hmm, and right. also exciting. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I love, and I love the way that from, you know, from, I've never, I've, I don't know that I've seen you live, but I've definitely seen a lot of your specials. And from the way that you tell stories and the way that you engage the audience, it doesn't feel, you never feel scared. Mm-hmm. You're always like, oh, she knows what she's up to. Yeah. And then even if there's a stumble, she's so fortified that like, she'll just go over here for a little bit and then come back. Like, it's very, like we were talking about calming. Like, it's yeah. very reassuring. Oh, good. I'm glad. Um, and I learned a lot, too. I'm really glad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can learn. Informative. We can learn. <laughs> well, you recently, what? 
Are you, you talking about the most recent one on P- the stand-up special on Peacock? Well, I wanted to say you open uh, a couple, I, I a couple sets I've seen that are circulating where you talk about fresh off the boat, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you basically land with um, you said we <laughs> it up so bad that yeah. it took twenty years. Twenty, for, yeah, it took for well, another Asian uh, American family comedy from network did, television. They didn't have Asians on television for like they had a moratorium of Asians for like for like a quarter of a century because of you, because of me. <laughs> what did you, what so, do you mean that you? It up so I, it's bad. Just, I'm just kidding. Oh, like okay. it's more like just <laughs> when when Sounds we jokes. did um, on my television show in 1994, right. All American Girl, which is 30 years ago. Wow. They were like so excited about bringing a non-white family to television. This is first Asian American family show on TV, and so much of it was like supposed to be based on my stand-up comedy. But I'm like a dirty, filthy nightclub yeah. comedian. Yeah. And so they were trying to make it like a kid-friendly show. So that's probably where the disconnect happened. Yeah. But um, it was very hard. It was really hard to be sort of the face of that. And then they just didn't have another Asian show. It took so wild. over 20 years for um, them to come back with Fresh Off the Boat. And now it feels like um, there is been an upswing in a lot of Asian representation in TV and film. Yes. And it's so exciting to see super so exciting. many projects. It's super exciting. And it's super like, it's it's a long time coming. Right. And it's still relatively new. Like, I mean, it's still it's still a growing. So I, I would love to see more happening. I like when you, um, you know, like when you're watching something and then you pop up in a guest star. Mm-hmm. And when you listen to a lot of these people like uh, a Fire Island movie mm-hmm. or like mm-hmm. like see you pop up in Nora from Queens. There's a conversation that's like, obviously you're hilarious and great and fun to be in the show, but there's a conversation of like, how could we not put Margaret Cho in this? Like she blazed the trail yeah. for like queer comedians, for Asian comedians to have these big projects. And so yeah. it's so fun to see another generation like. And definitely I'm guilting everybody into <laughs> making <laughs> being their show. Like, you would not have this if I didn't do, you know, like, of course I use like, that. Run me yeah. my role. You better. <laughs> you better. It's a recurring. Yeah, I have no pride about it. I'm like, you know what? I, no, I definitely think it's, for me, it's job security. Right. Like, trying to <laughs> make sure to get my foot back in the door. Like, and I love that, like, everybody is so kind and gives me the space to do stuff. It's really fun. Yeah. So I'm really, I'm really thrilled about that. That's amazing. Really That's nice. So cool. We have to ask you about Mariska Hargitay. Ooh, yes. You did SVU, yeah? I did SVU. And she was on All American Girl. That was one of her first acting jobs. What? Was she was on my show before SVU. So this is like really long time ago. So yeah, 30 years ago. Incredible. That's insane. Wait, what did she play on your show? She was a bartender in, um, I think the club was called Frotage. Uh And uh, she (laughs) was in the show and um, she was just gorgeous. And she is still gorgeous, of course. But yes, I, I was so excited to be on SVU. That's so incredible. What is a day on an SVU set you love like? SVU. Because I'm obsessed with it, but I'm like, these actors are like booked for like 12 hours and then they yeah. leave. Well, they get everybody um, go for starts usually in Chelsea Piers. They have the studio built in there. And so it's, um, you know, you go in and everybody knows what they're doing. Everybody on that show has been on that show for over 20 years. Yeah. Whether that's, um, you know, anybody in the crew or like makeup and hair, all of them, they know what they're doing. So they have it completely dialed in. And then you go and you shoot stuff in like, we were shooting all over in Chinatown yeah. and the streets are busy, like New York is busy, but they're managing to shoot all of these things inside the hustle and bustle of New York City. It's so incredible. It's because everybody knows what they're doing. Wow, so That's I, so crazy. I'm really impressed by the professionalism and also the, um, just the metal that they have, that this incredible ability to shoot in the busiest, most craziest city ever. That's nuts. I, I thought they would like shut down the block and like no. be like, no one oh, come by. Yeah. Nothing shuts down. Nothing is, uh, you know, and they deal with the sound, the way the sound is in the city. So if wow. sirens are going by, it's just part of it. You know, they let all of the natural New Yorkness come through. I mean, I think that's why the show is so successful is because it just exists within the city it's shot in yeah. so seamlessly. Yeah. And I always like watching it and being like, oh, I've been on that street corner. Oh, yeah. I blacked out over there. Oh, I threw up on that corner. You know, yeah. I mean, just like simple things like that. It's yeah. so great. And, and um, you know, Olivia Benson. It's just, just, just so iconic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I like when she has short hair. To me, that's the most iconic, but they're all... The it's earlier like, season. Those were good. the good ones, too, where she would get, like, just the full season would be all about her. Mm. And then they would be like, remember the one where she got kidnapped? Oh, my God. And it God. was, like, a five-episode mm. arc, and she was just in a bedroom for five episodes. It was so good. So good. She's I, just so good. I yeah. wonder if it even... I mean, this is a dumb question, but I wonder if it even feels like acting anymore because... Like she has, she's not playing any other characters. She's just been this character for that long. Well, she like knows, obviously she's she yeah she knows what she's doing. Like when and you know I've got to work with her really intensely, and so when we're doing the scenes, she's really um, playing it all different kind of ways. So you get to try That's to cool. tr tr try different ways to approach something that seems kind of simple, like an interrogation scene. She'll come and like look at it from different ways. So it's very generous as an actor to work with somebody that's like knows her their their character so well right mm -hmm. that they can just come at it from a different angle so it's really i love that i think it's really cool we need to get you on that show yeah you got to i've tried i've when i lived in new york i well, auditioned twice but we'll just, we'll start maybe a dead hooker you know what i yeah. mean something there's like that like, no. there's like a million like if you think about like <laughs> a million things that you could be you could sort of be a you know like a Figure in the nightlife. You could mm -hmm. be criminal. You could be victim. There's a lot Ooh. of places we I can go. I want to see you. I want to see you. They. And when I'm, did you open the door? But you're like the eyelashes here. I'm, the wig is so. No, you're like you're like disheveled in the oh. morning. The morning after, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Did Wanda come home last night?" And you're like, "Haven't seen her." <laughs> <laughs> that's Wanda? What I, yeah, that's what I see. All right, <laughs> let's take a break. We'll be right back. And we're back. back. <laughs> um, okay, recently this interview with Cat Williams has sort of gone super viral. Yeah. And Cat Williams is talking a lot about um, <clears throat> getting an invitation to the Illuminati, Ooh. turning down $50 Ooh. million dollars Ooh, I wish. for a deal. You know, like all of these sort of like Hollywood things that you hear about. Yeah. What is like, what is the most Hollywood experience or like, what do you know about that's happening behind closed doors or what have you been invited to? You know, yeah, I've never secrets. been invited. I've <laughs> never, I've never been invited to the Illuminati. I uh -huh. still don't know what that is, but I'm not at the level of Cat Williams, who I absolutely love. Oh, me too. Yeah, I love right. Cat Williams. I mean, I think it's just, he can, he's such a, he's probably like the best, he can read. He just yes. reads people to fill. Yes. Just snatches everybody's wig. Like, it's just, it's unholy how good he is. Yeah. Just snatching wigs and snatching. He's just the best. But um, I think, like, the most Hollywood thing is... Uh, somebody warned me, like, really sternly, don't ever park in Milton Burrell's parking space. <laughs> and I think it was, like, really, like, um, this was, like, in 1985 or something. <laughs> and I was invited to the Friars Club. And, the, you know, Milton Burrell's parking space was, like, really, first it was all the handicapped spaces, and then it was Milton Burrell's space. And they were, like, never park there. And I think somebody had parked there, and he really read them. But it was, like, this thing where it was all of these people uh, – <laughs> going, it's like all these old comics would get together and like do sets for each other. Oh. So it was like, it was just like Joan Rivers and it was um, Don Rickles and uh, Steve Allen and everybody would wait for Milton Berle and he would do comedy. And it was just, to me, it was a very intimidating experience. They put way too much uh, mayonnaise in the shrimp Louie. <laughs> like it was a very like weird kind of mayonnaise <laughs> salad experience. Um, so that's the only thing that I was really like openly invited to. Yeah. That's so funny. Were you well received as you were coming up in Hollywood? Kind of. I think because I was just so odd. So nobody felt really threatened by my uh, appearance. Everybody mm. was sort of amused that I was just this, this like young Korean kid kind of around. Right. And so I was, I was taken care of very well. You know, huh. people like... Um, Joan Rivers really took uh, a notice and shined me and took care of me a lot. And, um, you know, I, I think I was really lucky and I found a lot of great comedians who really enjoyed my comedy and also wanted to see what was happening, what, what else would happen. Right. So that was really a good place to be. Did you ever feel like you were like kind of singled out a little bit? Because I feel like you were one of the first comedians I ever saw 
performing and talking about queer rights mm-hmm. and like being non-binary and mm-hmm. kind of that information, which was like new to me when I was hearing your stand-up specials. Yeah. Did anyone ever say anything to you about that or like try to make you tone it down? Oh yeah, totally. And uh, like also, uh, you know, when when I would talk about drugs, that was oh, a big yeah, deal you, too. <laughs> never talk about drugs. Like, never talk about drugs. You talked about sex toys hard yeah, for a while. Yeah, I still do. Okay. Like I think all that stuff is really important to yeah. talk about and yeah. discuss. But yeah, like queerness, um, any of that stuff, was so uh, incredibly outlaw. Um, and the p- people that I was really responding to in comedy and in art, I think, is like, I was all about Sandra Bernhardt and Madonna's relationship. To me, that was like everything because it uh-huh. seemed so cool yeah. and it seemed so out there. And um, so that to me was like, oh, that's inspiring. You know, I love that. Do you, did, would, did you have an example of someone who was really using their voice that you, saw and you were like oh now that i'm in front of people i'm gonna say this or did it just come naturally to you to be like you know what racism sucks and (laughs) maybe (laughs) maybe we should question authority i guess it was mostly probably people like uh richard Pryor because he was Mm. very honest and like very forthright about all of all of his life whether that was how racism affected him how drugs affected him all that stuff so to me he was a really great example of how to be, you know, and then I think um, just watching somebody like that rise and, and of course, become so powerful and and then uh, deal with, like, the def- difficulty of his disease, his diagnosis, yeah. his death, like, it was, like, really, to me, it's very intense. So I was lucky enough to know him a little bit at, near the very end, and I work with him some, but, you know, like, I, I just think he's not he's not brought up as often in conversation of somebody that was really pivotal right. to the way that we think about comedy and the way that we think about truth in comedy. Cause that conversation has evolved so much and even more so now with people doing comedy on TikTok and, you know, getting through as, as many sort of like cultural revolutions and like peeling back the layers of our wokeness and our brain. Mm-hmm. Like what is funny? What is acceptable? What are words we can say? What are words we can't say? Um, yeah, I think it it is such a fascinating thing to see. I mean, you do such an amazing job of being earnest, speaking about issues that really matter, Mm -hmm. and then, like, belly laughs, like, gut chuckles. Thank you. (laughs) And I think a lot of people are nervous. Like, a lot of people are like, no, I'm meant to be the clown. I'm meant to entertain. I'm Even us, I mean, we're on a podcast. Like, this is a long form. We've been doing it for years. We just spill what's in our brain. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we go like, people don't want to hear us be super political. People don't want to hear us, like, speak up. They want to hear us, like, tell dirty jokes about in, in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. Which we'll get but to. that is political too. Like you know, if you're putting your life in a in a, a space that's public right. and a life that is contested, like there's so much homophobia, mm-hmm. there's so much mm-hmm. anti drag, there's so much anti gay stuff out there that to be openly sexual and right. celebrating that and laughing about it is incredibly political. So both sides are political, whether it's openly talking about politicians right. uh, or just talking about our lives. It's incredibly important. Yeah. Yeah. Take that. We are doing the work. <laughs> Margaret Cho says so we're, we're doing, doing the, the work. work. We're doing the work. <laughs> and like the thing is, is that we can find profound in the things that are profane. Like the thing Ooh. that is blowing my Ooh. mind. This is like Profound not even a joke sure. today. I was like blown by, blown away by Ice Spice on the TikTok sound that's going, bitch, you think you're this shit? You're not even the fart. Yes. Right. That's so deep to me. That is deep. It's so, it, girl, I was like, holy sh-. Wait, like, I was like, wait, hold up. It's incredible. You think you're the You're not even the fart. Like It's there. And it's like, <laughs> what's crazy is that she is somehow putting the intersection of cool uh-huh. and absolute absurdity together, yeah. which I think is something Cardi B does. Like, yeah. so it, good. And it is, it is, you're like, that is the hottest lyric in hip hop right now. The hottest. And you're literally saying fart. And, and but you, but you think you're the <laughs> but you're not even the fart is like, to me, I, I mean, my kingdom for the, the, the intelligence to come up with Agreed. that. Agreed, yes. That read is so, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Nobody can come back from that. Nobody can. Nobody, who's going to even come? You can't step up. No. The only person who could come back from that is Cat Williams. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. Like, I would like to see his response. But that, to me, it's really like, that is it. That's Incredible. all I need. Okay, speaking of the youth. 
Ice Spice being the youth, <laughs> you have also sort of for years talked about your sexuality and sort of gender in a mm. way that a lot of people were like, well, what's going on? You're bi, you're queer. Like what? Everyone was like always questioning. It. And now all the kids are like, we're pan and we don't care and who mm -hmm. cares? And, yeah, whatever. Uh, nothing matters. Why? 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 Why are you in my pants? I love it. Yeah, I love it. I like. Well, I like the idea that it's like gender can be evolving, and also we can actually not conform to what's been laid out for us. That we can like find a forge a new path. Right. So to me, that's always really interesting and also very like. Oh, illuminating, like, oh, I think that's what I've been this whole time. Yes. Right. Which is cool. Well, I, we were having this conversation. Was it with you? Maybe we was talking to Delta. Mm -hmm. What was the conversation? It was with a drag queen. <laughs> it might have been me. <laughs> we were just talking about the evolution of identities mm -hmm. and how that there are some people who are like, oh, if I was 17 now, mm -hmm. I would be a woman. Oh yeah, yeah like yeah, at yeah. this point in my life, I would be a woman. But that was just was not an option. It wasn't for an me. option because we didn't have the language to like know what it was, or mm -hmm. the it, we had no example. It was right. just like mm -hmm. I feel different. I guess I'm gay. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is so. It, it is such a it, that to me is a very profound sort of thought to be like, you know, born in a different time. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. whole trajectory would be different. Huh. Huh. Should we take a break? We should. All right. <laughs> 